Hello class, welcome to pre-algebra lesson 1-4, which is all about ordered pairs and relations. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use ordered pairs to locate points and use graphs to represent relation. So example one, graph ordered pairs. So this is something that you guys have been doing since elementary school, so hopefully this lesson doesn't seem too bad. Um, just a reminder, when you're graphing ordered pairs, this is called your x-axis, the one that goes up and down is your y-axis, and where they intersect is called the origin, or the point is called 0, 0. So this is your negative x, so it works like a number line, right? This is your positive x, and then this going up would be your positive y, and below would be your negative y. So if we start by graphing letter A, which is at 3, 4, you always start at the origin, okay? So you don't actually put a dot there, but I just wanted you to know where I'm starting with my pen. And I'm going to move positive 3, because ordered pairs are always written x, comma, y. It's always alphabetical order. So I'm going to move 3 in the positive x direction, and then I'm going to move up 4 in the positive y direction. I'll label that point A. Then for B, I would go negative 2 in the x direction, so left 2 in the x direction, and then I'm going to go up 7, and that would be point B. C is at 0, 0, so that's right where they, the two axes, so that's the plural for axis, is axes, so that's where C would be. And then D, I would go positive 5, and then negative 2. So that means I'm going to go down 2. All right, so I've done A, B, C, and D. I want you to try to graph E, F, and G on your own. Good luck. All right, I labeled E, F, and G in red. So that way it's easier for you guys to see where they should be. If you have any questions about that, please be sure to raise your hand and ask for help. All right. Now, let's look at identifying ordered pairs. So the opposite of what we were just doing. This time, we start with all of the letters on the graph, and we have to write where they are. So I'm going to look for point B, and I see that it is located right up here. And I see that's 7 in the x direction and 6 in the y direction. So I'm going to write 7, 6. Again, remember, you always do x, then y. If I look for point r, I see that's right there. I went negative 1 in the x direction, and I went positive 2 in the y direction. Point c is right here. That's 5 in the positive x direction, and I went down 3, so a negative 3 in the y direction. q is located right here. I didn't have to move left or right for that one, so I'm going to put a 0, but I did have to move down 5, so that's negative 5. D is right here. I moved negative 1 in the x direction, and then I moved up 5. T, I moved 1 to the right, so the positive x direction, and I moved down 3, so it's a negative 3. F is located way up here. So I moved 1 in the positive x direction, and I went up 10. U, I moved right 5 units, and up 6. All right, I did the first 8 points. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to try the next 6 points on your own. Good luck. All right, I highlighted all of those six points in the lime green color so you can see that where they are on the coordinate plate. And then I want you to double check your answers over on the left. So make sure J, V, K, X, N, and Y are all in the correct, or you have the correct coordinates for them. If you don't, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm more than happy to assist you. All right, example three. Let's talk about expressing relations as tables. And then we want to determine the domain and range. So the first thing, a relation is when you have a set of ordered pairs. 
And when you want to express them as a table, basically all you're doing is breaking them up into their x and y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my first x, I have a 1. My second x, I have a 2, then I have a 3, and I have a 0. That's all I'm going to do for the x part. Then for the y, I write it in the same order. So I'd write 4, 2, 0, and then 2. That's all you have to do to express it as a table. You break it up into two columns just like that. If I want to know the domain and range, fun fact, the domain is your x values and the range is your y values. So if I want to write out my domain, I can do a D and then the squiggly bracket. And then all you do is list the numbers for the x. So my smallest is a 0, then I have a 1, 2, and a 3. And I'm done listing my domain. Then for my range, I do the same thing. I find my smallest number, and then I have a 2. I have another 2, but I don't have to list it a second time. And then I have a 4. So you can see my range has one number fewer than the domain, right? I only have three numbers listed there. That's okay. Okay, it doesn't always have to be the same amount of numbers. Why don't you express the relation 4, 1, 3, 2, 0, 1, and 2, 3 as a table, then determine the domain and range. So on your piece of paper, on your notes, just break it up like this, make your table, and then um, select the correct domain and range. Good luck. Hopefully you ended up at letter B. Your table should have looked something like what I have written on the board. And then your domain remembers all of your X values and your range is all of your Y's. If you have questions about that, please be sure to ask for help. All right, example four, relations as graphs. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna take, Jose earns $5 an hour doing yard work. We're gonna make a table with that information. Then we're gonna convert the table to a graph, okay? So make a table of ordered pairs in which the x-coordinates represent the hours worked and the y-coordinates represent the amount of money Jose earns for one, two, three, and five hours of work. All right, so if Jose earns $5 an hour and he works one hour, that means he earned $5. If Jose has worked two hours, he would earn $10. If he's worked three, it would be 15. And if he worked five, it would be 25. So my ordered pairs would be one, five, two, 10, three, 15, and five, 25. That's what I'm gonna graph on this next page here. Okay, so remember, the hours were our x-axis, right? So I'm going to label my graph. All right, and then I'm going to write in numbers here. Just because this graph's kind of big, I'm going to go every other before I um, write numbers. And then for the money earned, I'm just going to go by fives to make my life easier since that is how much he earns per hour. All right, so for one hour, he earns $5. For two hours, 15, or sorry, two hours is 10. For three hours, he earns 15. And then five hours, he earns $25. And that is what my graph should look like. All right, so now to your turn. I want you to practice making a table um, for this question. Sue is following a recipe for cookies, which requires two cups of sugar for each batch of cookies made. Suppose X represents the number of batches made. Make a table of ordered pairs in which the X coordinate represents the number of batches made and the Y coordinate represents the cups of sugar needed for one, two, three, four, and five batches made. Good luck.
All right, hopefully for this one, when you looked at letter A, you said, okay, for one batch of cookies, it says that she needs three cups of sugar. That doesn't match what the story problem said. So then you look at letter B. For one batch of cookies, you need two cups of sugar. That's correct so far. But then for two cups of, or two batches of cookies, it says you still only need two cups of sugar. That's not right. Then over here, for one batch of cookies, it says zero cups of sugar. I would not want to eat those cookies. So that means letter D must be right. For one cup of, or one batch of cookies, two cups of sugar. Two batches of cookies, four cups. Three batches, six cups. That is correct. Then, that means on the next page, we're going to look for the graph that matches these ordered pairs. Okay, so which graph shows the amount of sugar needed for this problem? Good luck. Hopefully you said letter B. You said one batch of cookies is two cups, two batches is four, three is six, four is eight, and five is ten. If you have questions about this problem or anything else from this video, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'd be more than happy to assist you. Have a great day.